Uh, my name is Don Ficken. I'm with the Library Telescope Task Force, and we have tonight with me uh, Tom Lynch and M Mike uh, Mot Motorson. Is that right, Mike? Did I get it right that time? Cool. Good. Yep. And so we're looking forward to a, a wonderful presentation by Mike. Uh, what I want to do is just talk briefly about the uh, Library Telescope Program. Uh, we've been around since 2008. I wish I would have thought of it, but I did not. The group in New Hampshire did uh, as an astronomy club there, and it spread uh, really a lot. We're up to almost, uh, well, I think 940 locations in six countries, and we've added binoculars to this. Uh, you can go to our librarytelescope.org website, and you can actually get a global map. Click on your country and click on your state or province, or if you're in Europe, on your uh, country there. And you can see whatever uh, locations of libraries that we know about that have actually been uh, doing this for some time. So, so our uh, the goal the goal of our task force is pretty simple. We're trying to grow the program and importantly share best practices. We get together once a month and we share what's going on, how to fix things, make things work better. Uh, our awesome Tom Lynch here that's uh, joined us here is uh, he runs our Facebook page. He's been working at this for several years now, and he's uh, approaching his goal is to get 6,000 followers, and he's definitely on track. He's been adding quite a few every night, every month. Um, it's not just about the library telescope program. We have stuff about astronomy and a lot of great stuff to share. So if you love astronomy, you love the night sky, uh, it's a good place to, to visit. And our website's full of... <coughs> Resources, the world map we've got listed on there, as well as uh, resources if you're wanting to start a program or if you're a patron just wanting to use the telescope. So these are really great resources for you in both cases. One of the resources uh, that uh, one of our members with the Astronomical League every month provides us a map of the night sky. And then it does change every month in the way the night sky works. And so we try to keep one for the current month, the next month out there. They're available both in English and Spanish, and we also post those to our uh, Facebook page. So if you go to the librarytelescope.org website, just scroll down, you'll see the maps there, or you can look for postings on our Facebook page. We've been doing, as I mentioned, programs for quite a long time, webinars. Um, Last month was on fall constellations for binoculars and small telescopes. This month, we're excited. Mike's got a really terrific program. I've seen some peaks of it here, uh, pocket planetariums. And next month, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up the year because we do not do programs and webinars in November, December, simply to do the holidays. We're going to talk about how to take photos through your telescope using your mobile phone. So that'll be kind of fun. It'll be a good, good way to end up the year. And as it gets uh, Saturn and Jupiter start coming up, it's a really great time to go out and look at the moon and try to take uh, some photo shots of those. All these webinars are posted on our YouTube account. And also, if you go to the homepage of librarytelescope.org, we've got a nice handy area that shows the webinars by year. You can click, the, click those and it'll take you straight to the, to the YouTube that's uh, you'll be able to see that video itself. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike. Uh, let me just say that we will be taking, I guess not questions to Facebook now, since we're not on Facebook, but we will be taking questions on Zoom. We'll try to hold those to the end uh, so that Mike can get through his uh, presentation. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing screen and we will get started here. So Mike, I'm looking forward to uh, your program here. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Moderson. I am an outreach coordinator for the Omaha Astronomical Society. and um, Looking forward to sharing with you some of my favorite uh, phone apps that you can use to help enhance the, uh, the library telescope experience. Uh, one of the kind of more stressful things that I think some people have when they check out the telescope and they take it home is, okay, well, I found the moon, but what else is there? And uh, there are some really uh, easy to use free apps uh, that you can get that will help uh, point you in the right direction. Um, so we'll go through a few of those, plus a couple other little accessory apps that you can get to, to do a couple other things with as well. Um, so with that, let me share my screen. I'm going to do this on the tablet uh, here, so you'll be able to see the app and how it works. Um, and I will just go through a few different guys here. So we're going to start with uh, a really simple to use app called Starwalk 2. Uh, it's available on um, uh, iOS or Android. And uh, there's a uh, this is the free version. There is a paid. Uh, let's turn it this way. There is a paid uh, some paid things you can do to remove the ads, to add extra features. The the free 
version is very basic in that it only covers um, constellations and stars, which it has very nice little pictures of, of your constellations. And it'll also have uh, the planets. But the thing uh, is, so if you download or if you pay a little bit extra, you can download um, the add-on content. So you can get deep sky objects, uh, more solar system objects, uh, different, uh, different versions of the constellations. Uh, but one of the things that I like um, about this app is some of the extra features that they have. If you go into the bottom right corner and hit the menu bar, there's stargazing news, which will give you a very nice list of interesting astronomy topics. So, you know, a hot thing that everybody wants to look at right now is this comet Nishimura. And it'll give you an example of, you know, where to find that, some background on it. You can also um, go to the astronomy calendar, which will give you uh, some ideas of things to look at. So conjunctions, um, like here, Mars and Moon. A conjunction is when two objects uh, in the sky get very, very close to each other to where they'd be visible um, probably in the same field of view through the telescope or through a pair of binoculars. And so you can uh, plan to see some of those. Uh, Uh, that are coming up. Uh, meteor showers, it'll tell you when, when some of the next meteor showers are, the moon phases. There's a very handy visible tonight guide, which will, uh, for the planets that are visible during any given period, it'll allow you to, uh, to see the, the time when it rises, when it reaches the highest point in its in its path through the night sky, which is kind of the best time to look at it because you're looking through less atmosphere and generally the lower on the horizon, the more uh, tumultuous the atmosphere is. So you get some uh, less uh, desirable, what we call seeing conditions when the, the, just the water vapors and wind and everything else is just kind of moving around more and it makes it a little fuzzy when you're trying to look through the planets at the low low altitudes. Um, so some of the major stars, um, if you pay for the additional content, then some of that will fill in here as well. Um, another common feature with all of these apps is the ability to plan your observing uh, for the future. So like in the top right corner, if I click the date, I can say, okay, that's great, but I, I'm busy tonight, but I want to go out, you know, this weekend. So what's available or what are the conditions on a day in the future? And then you can set the time as well um, on some of these for when you're looking. And then uh, the last really nice feature that I like on this app is um, uh, oh, well, there's actually two. So there's Sky Live, which will show you the current uh, thing on the planet. But also, oh, I unfortunately don't have the paid version, so you do have to put up with ads. Okay, sorry about that. So um, the other thing would be these space quizzes. So there's different uh, quizzes about different uh, space topics that you can go to, like famous firsts in space, you can take the quiz. Um, and there's a number of those. What is, I don't wanna do that, get out of here. It's always something. Okay, so we'll go to the next app. This is also free. This is an app called SkyMap. Uh, I believe that this one is only available for Android. Uh, it was kind of originally done by Google. With any of these apps, one thing that you're going to want to do is calibrate the compass on your phone. So to do that, as the um, animation shows you there, you'll tip 
tip your 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 phone around or kind of make figure eights with it usually works pretty good uh, because one thing you can do then is actually and I'm doing it now I'm just moving my phone and pointing it up at the night sky and so you can literally just point your phone up in the sky and it'll show you uh, what you're looking at with this app uh, on the left side there's a few uh, bars that you can click or icons so if you don't want to see the constellation lines drawn if you don't want to see planets if you you, there's a grid line you can remove, the horizon you can remove. Um, you take the stars out if you just want to focus on deep sky objects. Uh, so it'll show you, you know, like there's M52 or M103, which are uh, Messier objects that uh, you should be able to see a lot of these in the library telescope, especially like the Andromeda galaxy. So it is a fairly basic app because it doesn't have a lot of the information about the objects, uh, but it'll just show you their locations. Um, and at the very top, you'll see the little eyeball. And most of these apps have this feature. It's called night mode. When you're out in the sky at night, you're going to want to click that and it makes everything red so that it doesn't damage your, your night vision as much to be looking at a screen. Um, the, the color red uh, versus white or blue light um, will have a much less impact on your night vision. There are um, these photos you can pick on this app. If you want to um, see, uh, you know, visually find one of the planets, and if you click find in the sky, then it'll, it'll zoom you in on, on where that is currently. And on the right side here, where you have the little finger swipe, that's how you would go between being able to drag your finger around to find the planet versus clicking the compass. And then that's when you move it around manually. So this is actually the one that I recommend the most for people is Stellarium because not only does it have all of those features uh, where you can look at different constellations, planets, deep sky objects, but it has a lot more features as well. Um, on the bottom right corner where you have the clock, you can um, that's where you can go through the time and change your date or your time of day to uh, pick when you're gonna be observing to see where things are at. Um, the uh, left side in the bottom left you can that's where you can choose if you want to see the constellation images uh, if you want to get rid of the horizon uh, or activate your night mode i'll leave that off for now um, and then also uh one a cool feature on this one is something called sky cultures so uh, we you know typically are in the western sky culture but if you want to see what other um, cultures have for their uh, they have different names for the constellations. We've all been looking at the same night sky forever and ever. And But depending on where you grew up, uh, you would have different myths and stories related to those uh, pictures in the sky. And this is a great way to explore some of those um, alternate uh, names for constellations and, and other objects and asterisms in the sky. You know, we don't have the northern tent uh, in our Western culture. Um, also, if um, this little icon right here uh, will give you a field of view. So I added one for the library telescope, which will give you the circle on the screen that will actually give you a representation of what uh, the field of view that you should see through through the telescope will be. And you can customize that to um, 
whatever uh, zoom uh, you're using on your, you know, you can go from two and a half, about two and a half degrees field of view down to about a half a degree field of view. And then this one will actually give you information about objects. So if you click, oh, let's, um, sorry, let's get back to Western here so I can actually know what I'm looking at. Uh, so for the Pleiades, you can click that uh, here, Pleiades. And then the bottom left corner, if you click, click on that, uh, it'll give you information about that object um, to varying degrees, depending on, you know, if it's just an individual star versus a star cluster um, or a planet. You can see a 3D image of the planet and it'll show you uh, the moons. All the planets except Mercury and Venus have moons. And if you, uh, you know, most also these will have the ability to search. So if you just want to search for something like the Hercules cluster, uh, you can you can zoom right to the object that you want to find. Uh, this one will also show you some satellites. I don't know if you saw the satellite that popped up there, but there's lots and lots of space junk in the sky. And so occasionally you'll be going and you'll see a bright light flying through. I don't know if I find any here. Uh, you'll see you know, steady light moving through the sky. You might wonder what that is. Um, we have another tool that we can use to identify those that we'll get to in a little bit. Um, but yes, uh, this is Stellarium. It's also available as a website. Uh, so you can go to the Stellarium website and use it on your computer at home to plan out things or it has the phone app and it's available on iOS or Android. Uh, so now we have uh, Sky Portal, which is made by Celestron, which is a, a very prominent telescope maker. And it runs on a platform called Sky Safari, uh, which is kind of a premium app. Uh, so here, uh, you're running this, you can see that you have the option to do your night mode down in the bottom, the little moon. And then uh, on the screen, you can see the date. So if I want to change, let's say I want to see what it's going to be like next year at the same date, then I can change that. And you can see how just different years on the same date, the night sky might change just a little bit uh, where the moon is, where the planets are. You can click on a star. If you click center, it'll help move you over there. Um, you do have the option with this. If you have a Celestron go-to telescope, it'll control your, actually control your telescope for you. That's kind of one of the, the main features they have for that. But again, it also has the information. Um, so Arcturus, very popular star. Uh, lots of really nice detailed information that they provide you on this, you know, uh, its size relative to other stars. So you can Mike, do an audio. So Mike, one of the questions we're getting is if you could repeat the, the apps when you're going through, you're mentioning it up front, but as you're moving through, just to make sure that they understand the current app you're working on, if that's okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is... Uh, uh, Celestron Sky Portal, and I believe we'll be posting, um, oh, here, I can, let me, well, I'll, I will uh, post uh, a link to, I have, I have all the links that I can share in the chat uh, before I log off here, once I get out of the share screen, and then there's also a little PDF document that I put together that will have them all, um, but this is another free app. Uh, it's it's a really really terrific one um, with a lot of uh, more advanced features. If you go into the settings, you can uh, go to the constellations. You can um, do some of those. Uh, you can change kind of how you view how you view those. There, there, there's the X. Get out of there. So if you want to see the pictures to kind of see what they represent. Um, you can change 
the magnitude of the stars that you want to see. So if you only want to see bright stars, so ma uh, for magnitude, that's a, a scale that astronomers use to relate the brightness of one star to another. And so the lower the number, the brighter the star. And so if you only want to see really bright stars, you could change that down to magnitude two. Um, same thing with the deep sky objects. Uh, and then you have the option to, to view them or not view them. And again, with this app, you have the ability to, like I'm doing now, picking up picking up that, the phone or the tablet, aiming it at the night sky, saying, oh, that looked interesting. I want to learn more about Mizar, which is a really cool double star, the middle star and the handle of the Big Dipper. Um, looks great in a library telescope. And you can get more information on that. Mizar and Alcor are a double star, but each one is also a binary. Um, well, the Mizar is a double star on itself, and then they're all binaries. There's actually six stars that are gravitationally linked up there. One of my favorite uh, favorite things in the night sky. And so another version of this, um, we'll go into um, kind of more of a premium version of, of this app. Because um, this runs on Sky Safari seven, uh, six, Sky Safari seven, and um, this they have three different versions. I think the cheapest one is three dollars, up to maybe forty bucks for the pro version, but it's um, often on sale. Um, does all of those same things um, with your night mode. But it also gives you things like, uh, if you click tonight, maybe, it'll give you suggestions on things that are viewable this evening. Planets like the Great Red Spot on Jupiter, if you want to see when that's going to, going to be visible. Uh, shadows of, of moons going across planets the planets themselves, deep sky objects. If you want to see, uh, you know, you want to find Andromeda, get all that lovely information. And it has a lot more information and, and a lot more objects, the more, the higher the level of the app that you get. So if you want to see that, you can center that. Um, a really cool thing that this also does, this little orbit down here, if you click orbit, and since we went to the Andromeda galaxy, we went far, far away. That was probably not a great example. No, let's go back and find one that's inside our galaxy. Now we're coming back to Earth. Let's look at Neptune. And we'll click orbit. And then we will zip away from the Earth and go over to Neptune the farthest planet from the sun. And now you can, you can observe its moons and where it's at and looking back at the solar system, or you can go further and even go outside of our, our solar system to another star. Um, let's pick this one randomly. And now we leave, we leave Seoul and we go clear across over here. And you can look back, look back from this perspective towards our solar system. Uh, just kind of fun way to explore uh, the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, you can, uh, I use this uh, to, uh, to record my observations. So you can, uh, let's say I looked at this star and I want to make note of it so I can create an observation. Um, maybe. Oh, I have to create a new session first. 
and then you can log use it to log your um, the different views of things that you have have seen in the night sky until you you know collect all of the the messier objects or uh, all the different planets You just click that and it should. Hmm. I thought it would go right to that. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and let's see, we're going to go to a couple more things. So that's it for the planetariums apps. But let's say you want to look at the moon. Uh, I have a, an app called Lunar Math HD. There's also one called Moon Globe if you're on iOS. Uh, Lunar Map is only available on uh, Android. It allows you to pick uh, different versions of the moon. So I actually usually like to go with this one. Well, I'm not going to download it. Um, but it's a really high quality picture of the map. It'll have all the craters labeled and you can really zoom in and see um, you know, you're not going to be able to, to zoom in quite this far on a library telescope, but it'll allow you to see the mare uh, and some of the major craters that you can definitely see in the library telescope. Uh, if you want to find the regions um, like landing sites of the Apollo missions, you can uncheck some of these other ones. and not showing them. I don't know why it's not showing. Well, I think you have to have the other map downloaded for that. Hmm. Okay, my apologies. That's, you gotta have the other map downloaded to, see, to do that but like the mare. So the seas, the big sea, flat um, sea areas on the moon. It'll show you the, the line, that little white line around the edge. That's what we call the terminator, which is where the light and dark uh, meet on there. Uh, that's usually right along the terminator is gonna be the best place to do uh, your observing. So you can see the most detail because the shadows are much longer and the topography becomes more highlighted. Um, so we were talking about satellites earlier. There's a really neat app called Heavens Above, which if you uh, if you see something going across the night sky and you want to identify what it is, or if you want to plan an observation of the International Space Station going over, you can click on that and it will sh actually show you the trajectory and how long it'll be up in the night sky. And you can plan ahead for different, you know, that'd be a really good one where it's going to go almost completely straight overhead and in, in the entire from horizon to horizon um, should be an easy one to find tomorrow night at uh, 846. But there's also uh, pieces of old rockets that you can find. Uh, obviously, the Starlink trains are an exciting thing to see sometimes unless you're an astrophotographer. And there's an awful lot of those, so you're never not able to really see one these days. Uh, um, but just a really handy app for um, um, if you are want to try and identify some some random uh, moving dot in the night sky. It'll tell you when it launched and, and things like that. Let's see. A couple more, I use this app a lot, Astrospheric, which is a cloud forecasting app. And I gotta just loaded these in here. So. Okay, there we go.
So this will show you the current, I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. So this will show me the current cloud forecast for my area. Um, and you can scroll across and get a few days out. The dark blue indicates clear skies. We talked about seeing conditions in relation to those planets, but that middle bar um, below uh, the dark blue here is the seeing conditions. And or I'm sorry, that's the transparency. And then below that is the scene conditions, uh, which are kind of different different things about uh, that affect our ability to observe. Uh, this will also allow you, if you click those little satellite icons uh, above the, the sun and moon trajectories, right in the middle there, it'll also show you the ISS. It'll give you the current moon phase and upcoming moon phases as well. So you can plan if you wanna see a certain part of the moon, you can plan for that. And the astronomical clock is a really good way to plan your observing sessions. You can modify this list, you can add planets, you can add a Messier object if you wanna add those into your list. And then it'll give you this trajectory with these lines of, um, when they rise, when they set, when they reach the highest point in the sky. And you can kind of zoom across and see that depending on when you want to view. There's another app that does the same thing called Clear Outside, which I use uh, sometimes. Um, it's based out of uh, England. So it always comes up uh, in the United Kingdom for first, unless you set your home screen. But if you hit current, it'll pull your GPS location and then give you a forecast in a little bit different format. Um, it's not quite as slick as astrospheric, uh, but it does have a little bit uh, of other things like it'll do rain um, and some other, a uh, little bit more detail on some of that weather stuff. And I think, uh, and so, yeah, those are uh, pretty much the apps we have. Oh, um, I have one more, which is kind of an experimental one, but you can uh, go to a website um, called Astro Hopper. Oops, that's the wrong one. Astro Hopper. No, that's not it either. Astro Hopper, there we go. Okay, sorry. Um, so with this, you would actually take your phone and mount it to the barrel of the telescope, set it on there, maybe um, use some rubber bands to attach it. And it will use the gyroscopes of your phone and the, the compass and everything to help navigate your phone um, directly. So it's a website. Um, so it, with, in this mode, you have to be online, um, but there is the option to uh, oops, that's not, there we go. To uh, in Chrome here, you can go to install app, and then it will actually download it and install it as a regular desktop app. So Astro Hopper. So then we can click on Astro Hopper and it'll load us in. And so what you would do with this is you would set it on your, you'd have it set on your telescope and you would point it at a known object. So let's say the, the star Arcturus, you would get that lined up. You'd click this align button wait for it to click. And now you're aligned on Arcturus. So if you go to, and you wanna find something else, you could search for M13, go. And then we know that we have to go and you follow that little line as you're moving the telescope up. And you should get pretty close to that object. And from there, you can just keep going to different stars. Um, helping you point in roughly the right direction uh, as you slew your telescope around. Uh, 
it's not a hundred percent perfect, but it is pretty good uh, from what I've experimented with it. It definitely gets you in the right direction. Um, it does help if you realign it every so often to uh, just to kind of re, especially if you go from one side of the sky to the other, it'll get a little off. And then if you just re find another star in a line, uh, it helps out quite a bit. Um, but yeah, those are those are the apps that I have been using and would recommend for anyone wanting to, to try to get a little deeper and a little bit more out of the library telescope to give those a try. Okay, Mike, that's uh, that's terrific. So let me see here. So I did just share your uh, spreadsheet with the links uh, through a PDF that I uploaded to our server. So there's a link now they can go pull that up and get right to it now. So you don't have to, to post each and single one of those. But uh, and thank you for doing that, Mike. It's it's really terrific. So if you've got some questions here. What I'm going to do real quickly is just share back the page that you have all those wonderful links on on one second and then um, I did have a comment from one of the folks here let's see here so this is the page that I have right here you guys see that okay or is it linked up oops hang on a second hang on a second I don't think I did that right so Mike uh, if you can while I'm looking while I'm fumbling with my little slide here um one of the questions that one of the folks had on our chat area was, do you need to take off the case of your tels of your uh, phone? Because will that mess up the magnetic um, part of the... Of if, your I think that that person's talking about a case that has a magnet built into the case. Um, which I don't... On mine, I don't have, you know, some of them have like a flip a flip cover and they have a little magnet to help um, hold them in place. So yeah, that that can be an issue because um, your your compass is obviously gonna be uh, corrupted by that other magnetic field that you have in close proximity to it. Um, and it does really help, uh, you know, to do a, uh, what I mentioned earlier, calibrating your your compass and your gyroscopes and everything to kind of give this figure eight motion or do an up down and a left right. Uh, and that'll kind of knock your, all those little sensors that your phone has, uh, get them kind of loosened up and then they'll reorientate themselves so that you're a little bit more accurate with where you're looking. Cause sometimes when you first pull the app out, you'll be looking over here and you'll be looking South and it'll say you're looking at Polaris and you're like, well, that's not right. And so, um you know you can you can definitely do it that way okay so are you seeing the uh the shared screen here with the the apps are you seeing that yes hey just want to give us a recap what you got there so you got the veto technology right starwalk you like yeah so that's the starwalk too so that one is the one that has all the neat extra stuff like the quizzes the news articles um if you pay, for, if it is fully featured, if you pay for the extra stuff where you can get the deep sky objects, so if you want to look at, you know, the Andromeda galaxy, you have to uh, pay extra to download the deep sky object uh, database from them. Uh, it is a very pretty app. The, the images and everything are very, very nice. Uh, over to the right is sky map. And that's the one that I very first had and I've had on my phone for like ever and ever. Um, even actually before I was really, really into astronomy, um, you know, I'd go out camping and I'd use that one just to kind of see what's what's where. Uh, it doesn't have, you can't click on the objects and really get the extra information like you can from some of the others. But if you just want a really simple, easy to use app, it's a good free option. Um, the Stellarium, which would be the next down there. That one is a fantastic app. Uh, you can do uh, a lot of, it has a lot of extra information. It's a very pretty app. Um, it's very, uh, the interface is very simple. It's not as complicated with all the settings and things as some of the other apps, uh, as like Sky Portal has a, just a little bit more um, settings and things that you can change, which can be nice but not necessarily needed for something, you know, simple, like you're just using the library telescope to, to check out some of the bigger deep sky object things or finding double stars. Um, and it, uh, that's the one that also has the, 
one of the features I like is that sky cultures where you can get the Middle Eastern sky culture, some of the native indigenous sky cultures from different areas. Um, sky portal is one of the, is the more of the free apps is the most fully featured. It has uh, a lot of really, if you click on the object, it has a ton of extra detail about information on, on known objects. Um, and, and the ability to, um, well, control, you control, I use it to control one of my telescopes that I have. Uh, you can actually use Stellarium. If you pay for the pro version, it will control a telescope. Uh, not the library telescope, those are fully manual, but uh, some other ones you can do. And then Sky Safari is uh, my favorite app of all of them, but it is not a free app. Uh, it is, it does cost a little bit to get even the, the basic version of that. Um, but it, it has a ton of features. Uh, if you get more into astronomy and you want to really have, or you want to have the biggest database and have the most objects and the most detailed information about those objects, then, then Sky Safari is the way to go. Uh, moon maps, uh, the, the Lunar Map HD or Moon Globe on uh, iOS. Um, the, 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 the Lunar Map is, the HD is for Android, the Moon Globe is for iOS, Apple, um, and they actually have a Mars globe as well, which I don't have on there because uh, I've never actually, I don't have an, any Apple products, uh, but I, one of our, one of my uh, club people has uh, suggested that is another thing that, that you could do uh, because it does have, you can, you know, if you want to see Olympus Mons or, you know, Valles Mariner, uh, you can, you can, you uh, can, check out all the different topographic features there. And uh, Astrospheric and is my go-to app for deciding whether it's whether, whether it's worth pulling out the telescope or not. If you know I can check it out over the lunch hour and say, oh, well, it's going to be clear tonight. So I guess I'll go and, and look at something. Um, and then Astro Hopper uh, is uh, if you want an option to uh, try and make the library telescope into what we would call a push to scope where it's not fully motorized and everything, but you are the motor and it will kind of guide you and, and tell you where to aim and how to, how to up adjust the telescope to get close um, on there. And I saw somebody come up in the chat with sky eye. Uh, that is another, uh, that's a little bit older version or different. It came out first. Um, very similar thing. Uh, I've had better luck with Astro Hopper than I have with Sky Eye, um, but they're both they both are, are kind of a push to system that that uses just your uh, instead of with your phone, where uh, and the planetary maps it kind of goes wherever you're pointing your camera towards. Not that it uses the camera, but that's kind of what you're looking at straight ahead. Uh, with these other apps, it allows you to do like an indirect alignment where you're looking down at the phone and it's kind of, it, it's orientated out the top of your phone, which would be towards the top of the telescope. Um, but they're both, yeah, if you want to play around with, with options like that, they're both worth checking out and, and seeing which one works best for you. So one thing we've I've learned, I've got a, an entire phone full of these things. They're fun. They're all really great. And each one's has got its pros and cons. Uh, one thing that uh, maybe just address for a moment, we're going to have to wrap up here. But I know that in an urban sky, right, uh, what you're looking at on these sky apps is is pretend because it's got so many stars, you can't even see anything near that. And I think most of them have the ability to move down where you can see fewer stars in the app that maybe more closely matches your sky. Is that correct, do you think? Yeah, definitely. And um, I don't know if they all do that, but definitely like Sky Portal, uh, I kind of hit on that a little bit when we were talking about the magnitudes. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can move that to, you know, magnitude three or two and really only see the big bright stars. Um, you know, here in Omaha, if I go out on my deck and look up right now, I'll see, you know, maybe 12 stars. Um, just because of all, you know, we're what we call a Bortle eight, um, which is the the light pollution scale, which goes up to I think to nine. So we're we're pretty bad here. And any anybody who lives in a, you know any decent sized city is going to have have those issues. Um, what was that last?
Yeah, we had one comment about, you know, should we be recommended? I don't think we're really saying we're necessarily recommending these as we're giving some options for folks to, to play with. And you know what, that's really what you got to do. You have a different type of phone. I happen to have, have Apple. Uh, some of my apps will work on both Apple and uh, Android. I get a lot of people come up with Androids. And, and so I need to talk their language a little bit. But uh, there's a lot of choices. And I think a lot of them are free. Um, and then there's a lot of them that if you get into paid apps and you can get a lot more capabilities, but then you're also yeah, the, more storage and all that kind of stuff, usually because they download large maps and things like that quite often. Yeah, the only one that I that on here that is not doesn't have a, a totally free version is Sky Safari. Um, which if you wanted this, this, the free version of Sky Safari, you would get Sky Portal because that's running on Sky Safari 6. Okay. Uh, they currently have Sky Safari 7. Um, and even, even with the free apps that we do have, uh, like with Stellarium, you can do Stellarium Pro. Um, but really all you get there is, is the ability to control your go-to telescopes. Um, but the Starwalk, uh, definitely you can, you can pay to have more add more objects and, and more databases um, to your, to your list. And, you know, Sky Safari, like I said, they have a three, like a $3 version and like a $15 version and a $40 version. So you can look at the features and, and each one gets you a little bit bigger and bigger database, um, takes up more space on your phone. Cause some of them are, you know, it's a couple, I think I have a, you know, a couple, maybe a gigabyte worth of extra ephemera data that, that, that it downloads. So we had one comment here about adding a place in the library telescope for the push to apps. And we've actually been talking about that in our library telescope team. In fact, I've been playing around with some 3D designs to be able yeah, to- Yeah, a couple, couple of people have made the, there's, you can really, ideally you want some type of mount that you can, you know, to, to sit that on rather than just wrapping rubber bands around it. And I think yeah. you did it. And I think somebody else had made one as well. Yeah. Um, that I remember from the groups IO. Yeah, that's right. So we have uh, we've got a lot of ideas. And that's once again, I think the idea of the, the task force, we get together and we talk about stuff like this and we practice it. Uh, I know that I've took this to a college and the college has a bunch of astronomy students and they were playing with Astro Hopper and they were having a good time because it can show them pretty quickly what's in the sky. But I also will tell you this stuff. All these sky apps are wonderful, but you, you kind of get lazy. You start not really understanding where the sky is and how it really works. And so you need to, to actually get the old planetaries out and play with the sky and actually learn how to star hop. That's it's kind of like, you know, basic stuff. If you get too much automated, you don't really understand what you're doing necessarily. So Mike. Yep, yeah. And, yeah. And staring, staring at the screen, you know, it is going to affect your night vision, even if it's on the night mode. Um, so you aren't going to be able to see the fainter, some of the fainter stars. And it, it really, you know, it, it's great. It's a great way to to get going, you know, and and find some things. But at some point, I definitely recommend you know set the phone down and just look up and just enjoy uh, the night sky and what it has to offer. That's right. Well, thank you, Mike, and thank you, Tom Lynch, and for yeah, all thanks, of you, everyone, and for all of you for joining. And uh, we will see you next month.